Coming to you today with yet again breaking news. What a crazy week it has been at Tesla. We have had a number of changes. We even just yesterday had a release of new PPF wraps that are going to be done in house. And of course, this is very likely in preparation for the Cybertruck, as we've been seeing a number of wraps on those in the prototypes that have been on the road. So a lot of changes, a lot of things happening. But today, Tesla has rolled out new lease prices for the Model Y and the Model 3. These special rates are lower than what they were just yesterday, and they're a pretty good number. And I'm going to show you how Tesla got here because, unfortunately, I cannot resist but to dig into the numbers and figure out what exactly they did and how this compares to what it was before. So we're going to go through all that detail today. A lot of cool things to talk about with this. And at the end of the day, more affordable is always a good thing. So let's head over to the computer and take a look. All right, so check this out. Here on the landing page on Tesla's website, it even shows it right here. Front and center, you can now lease a Model Y for $3.99 a month, which is pretty incredible. And the Model 3, $329 a month, which is really an amazing value for this car. Both of these cars are fantastic. Now, these are the base trim of each. And if I go into order now, I can give you the exact details of uh, what you're looking at with the lease here. So. Lease $399 a month, and this is on a rear-wheel drive Model Y, 43990 So when you open this up and we take a look down here at the T's and C's, we can see this is a 36-month, 10,000-mile lease with a $4,500 down payment. But don't be confused because this doesn't include all the fees. The $399 a month, however, does include the destination fee. So that is baked into the numbers to get to $399 a month, which is nice. But... You have that $4,500 down payment. You have to bring the first payment of $399 with you at down and the acquisition fee of $695. So really your down payment is closer to like $5,500 um, to make this deal happen. But $5,500 and then you're at $399. Now, of course, you can lower this and let's see what the lowest it'll allow us to do. So if it technically was zero, it would be $536 a month. And you'd still have to bring a 536 plus 695, so about $1,200 at time of signing. But the standard lease is $4,500 down, $399 a month. Now let's head over to the Model 3 and take a look at those numbers. So at the Model 3, over here at lease, again, 36 months, 10,000 miles, and that same $4,500 down, $329 a month. And again, $4,500 cash down first, payment of 329 and acquisition fee of 695. Now this, if we drop to zero, will bring your payment to 472, um, but again, 472 first month payment and that's 695, so about $1,100 in this case. But 4,500 gets you 329 a month. Now this is where all the fun happens and this is why I have mental issues because I can't help but go through this. But essentially, I've broken down the numbers and I've made some assumptions and don't worry, I've put this in a different format so it's nice and pretty. But just for those of you who are looking for a snapshot of all the data, here it is right here. The assumptions I am making here are that Tesla is going with a 56% residual on the Model Y. They're also going with a 6.49% interest rate, which for leases is different, but don't worry, I have this in the calculator um, correctly. So 399.08 is what I come up with. And this is assuming them applying the full $7,500 towards this lease. So when you lease a vehicle, all those battery requirements go right out the window. You can actually lease any of these electric vehicles and get the $7,500 tax credit Kind of. Basically what happens is if you lease a electric vehicle, that tax credit then goes to the lender. So the bank is the owner of that vehicle and they get the credit. And because it's a bank, they actually don't have the same requirements that you and I have. So they get the full $7,500. And whether they pass that on to you or not in the form of lowering your payment is completely up to them. They can pocket the entire $7,500 for every vehicle that they sell. And usually what happens is a bank and a manufacturer will team up and they'll kind of figure out how to split the money up. They might give you know maybe half of it to you or three quarters of it to you and then they'll split the other quarter between the two of them. But 
That's neither here nor there, but just understand when you lease an electric vehicle, technically you can get the tax credit. It'll just be in the form of however much the bank feels like giving to you as an incentive towards the lease. So when you see these super low lease price specials for electric vehicles, it's usually because they're playing around with this tax credit and giving more of it uh, in the form of bringing down that capitalization number. So let's go back over to the spreadsheet and I'll show you where this all falls together. This is the breakdown of what we just talked about. 43,990, 3.99 a month, 10,000 miles, $1,390 delivery fee is included. And then on top of that, you would bring $4,500 in cash for down payment, 695 for acquisition, and that first month payment of 399. That's how this is set up. So when we look at this, basically the total cost of all of your payments will be $14,364. You're gonna bring this money with you at down payment plus that first month, which is already calculated up here. Your total cost to lease this vehicle is $19,559 over 36 months. The MSRP on this vehicle is $43,990. The destination fee of $13,90 gets you to $45,380. The cost of the lease at $19,559 gets you to a residual of $20,000. 25,821 with no interest. So this is basically a benchmark. You would say what we can do from here is kind of take this information and put some of those assumptions in that I talked about. So if we take those assumptions that I talked about earlier, a 56% residual value, a 6.49 annual interest rate broken down to a lease money factor and 36 months. Here's how it breaks down. We have $2,085 in added fees, which is the delivery fee and acquisition fee, total credits, which would be the down payment of 4,500 and that 695, 399 and $7,500 tax credit. And then you bounce that against the price of the car of 43,990. Total capitalized cost is 33,380. You are only paying the difference between the capitalized cost and the residual value. So at 56% of 43,990, that gets you to 24,634. So this difference right here is what matters. You are paying your lease payments based on this right here and this only plus the interest rate. That gets you to 399.08. I'm assuming these numbers are pretty close to being right. Total down is close to $5,600 in this situation. That is a ton of money to put down on a lease, of course, and you can lower that, but that's neither here nor there. I want to look at this compared to what it was before so we can point out exactly what Tesla did. So previously, before this price update for the lease, Everything else would be the same except for how much is being applied to the vehicle when you lease it. So you have the same down up front. Actually, you have a little bit more in this case, $5,694.66 because the payment is higher. Um, but that's all going towards the credits. What's different is Tesla was previously only applying, I'm guessing, estimating roughly $4,200 of that $7,500 towards the lease previously. So that would bring your capitalized cost to 36,680. Same residual value and same interest rate, same months, that brings you to 499. And that's what the lease payment was before this change. So it dropped $100 a month because they ended up giving you 3,300 additional dollars towards that credit side, bringing your capitalized cost down about $3,300. And this is really that tricky side of leases when it's related to these tax credits because the banks can do whatever they want with this money. And previously, I believe Tesla wasn't giving any of that money. They were keeping all of it. And recently they must have started to apply some of that money towards the leases. And I'm guessing about $4,000 previously. Now, if they applied the full $7,500 towards the lease, this is going to make sense based on the same interest rate that they're charging for a loan just capitalized over 36 months instead of 72. And the residual value being at 56. So it's really important to understand how this works because you can really start to figure out which manufacturers are 
giving more of the credit to you and which ones are giving less of the credit to you, at least when it comes to leasing. So let's take a look at the Model 3 and see how that compares because it helps to validate these numbers even further. So here it is, a 2023 Model 3 rear wheel drive, 38,990, 329 a month, 10,000 miles, same 1390 is included in that 329, 4500, 695, and that first payment of 329. So looking at this, we're looking at $11,844 just in payments. The down payment of 4,500 plus the acquisition brings you to $17,039 over this 36 months. That's how much you're gonna pay out of pocket. Now the car itself at $38,990 plus $13,90 destination fee brings you to $40,380. Then take away the total cost of that lease that you're going to pay. That brings you to $23,341, giving us kind of a baseline without interest considered. So when we look at this with interest, here's where we're at. That same added fees, 2085, this time 12,695 because that first payment is lower. Uh, the price of the car, $38,990. Total capitalized cost, $28,380. Residual at $21,328. That gives us a 54.7% residual and interest rate at 6.4936 months. That brings us to that $329 payment. So about $5,500 out of pocket to make this work. And again, if we look at this compared to what it was previously, it was 429, I believe. So I got it pretty close. Again, that would be if we dropped it from 7,500 to $4,200. So I think that this is reasonably accurate um, for both the Model Y and the Model 3. So obviously it's always a good thing when affordability goes up at Tesla. Now, whether you should or shouldn't lease a vehicle, there's a lot to consider. And I have a video right here comparing that versus purchasing. And I think that it's very interesting to be able to break into these numbers and kind of figure out what Tesla's probably doing and what they were previously likely doing with these tax credits. So Tesla was uh, keeping a good portion of that previously, and they used this as another lever uh, to help boost demand for one reason or another. So let me know in the comments, what do you think? Is this a good deal? I think this is pretty incredible deal if you look at it just on the basis of leases. This is a fantastic lease rate for an incredible car, whether it's the three or the Y. That's pretty cheap, especially compared to what else is out there. So I hope that you enjoyed this video and I can't wait to catch you on the next one.